What's up, folks? Welcome back to Tactical Tortoise. My name is Trevi, and we are diving back into the exciting, weird, and wonderful world of Tyranids today, talking about the Norn Emissary and Norn Assimilator, the two big monsters released alongside the 10th edition Tyranid Codex, and specifically, the differences between the two and which one you should take in your Tyranid army by taking a look at their respective data sheets. Fortunately for us, they're actually almost identical, at least in their top line profile and special abilities. Both of of the Norns have a very fast 10 inch movement, an impressive toughness of 11, two plus base armor save, protecting 16 wounds, alongside oftentimes a five plus feel no pain from their singular purpose ability that we'll talk about later, an impressive leadership value of seven, which is important because they do have the synapse keyword on their data sheet. So they are gonna be always rolling 3d6 for battle shock check. They then also have a base OC value of five, which is solid for a big stompy monster, but can again be improved by singular purpose. On top of that, both of them have the same monstrous Scything Talon attack profile, six attacks, hitting on twos at a kind of piddly strength of nine and AP two. However, for an impressive flat three damage apiece. These guys aren't really big armor crackers, but what they are good at doing is clearing out heavy or medium enemy infantry. They do struggle a little bit without their special weapons against heavier armor. That's the real downside of the Norn profiles. They both have a D6 damage deadly demise, incredibly damaging if you can get them to freak out in the, your opponent's lines where they could do ridiculous damage with that six inch explosion. They also bring the Shadow in the Warp faction ability to the table, so they allow the triggering of Shadow in the Warp, even if you don't have any other Shadow in the Warp units elsewhere in your army, which is a nice thing to have, although usually you'll see them alongside Hive Tyrants or Nero Tyrants, so they will have some backup on that. The last thing that unifies these two is the Singular Purpose ability, and this is really the headliner for the Norns. This allows you at the start of the first battle round to either choose one of the following one enemy unit or one objective marker. If you choose an enemy unit, you get full hit and wound rerolls against it. This is what can give the Norns a good opportunity to crush through heavy uh, enemy armor. With that kind of middling strength base melee attack, it suddenly gets a lot better once they get full rerolls against it. This is also not only melee attacks, it should be noted, however, it also benefits their ranged weapons, and they do have, in some cases, a pretty wide gamut of ranged weapons. It's also selected at the start of the first battle round, so you can see whatever your opponent deploys across from the Norn and then choose to target that with singular purpose, which is pretty good. It gives you a little bit of reactionality. However, the most exciting one, I think, is by targeting an objective marker. You can choose an objective marker, for example, in the center of the table where you're going to be bulleting your Norn. While in range of that objective marker, it gets a five plus feel no pain. This is how you protect it from damage with its high save characteristics and toughness value, as well as an objective control characteristic of 15. 15. That's so high. <laughs> In my opinion, this is really the primary focus, the singular purpose, if you will, of the Norn units. They want to choose an objective marker and absolutely establish the dominance of the hive mind over that area of the battlefield, where they're going to stand right in the middle. They're going to potentially punch everything around it for a little bit of damage with their multitude of melee attacks and ranged weapons, and mostly just shore up your objective control of that area, prevent your opponents from being able to easily steal it, and at least for a turn or two, sit around and not die. And this really coincides with the general Tyranid game plan of being kind of a brawly faction that wants to establish control of the middle of the table, use its lighter units to score secondaries all game, but mostly just attrition out their opponent from there. They don't oftentimes push into your opponent's deployment zone outside of some very specific instances. They want to set the battle line somewhere beyond the center objectives and just chill there for the entire game with defensive units like Horospexes, the Norns, and Maliceptors. And these Norn data sheets fit right into that. The big downside of the unit in the current data slate, however, is that they are relatively expensive. At 290 to 300 10 points, they are often double the cost of other heavy frontline monsters elsewhere in the Tyranid Codex, and that is a tough pill to swallow. So if you are including them in your list, it's important to choose the one that you're getting the most bang for your buck from. So what are the specific differences between the Emissary and the Assimilator, the two options of Norn Datasheet that you can take or build out of the new kit? The Emissary focuses on psychic damage and survivability. It gets a four plus fail on a pain against mortal wounds, very good for enemies trying to get 
around its high defenses with mortal wound damage. However, significantly less powerful now that devastating damage no longer inflicts mortal wounds. Previously, this guy could basically just shrug off devastating wounds with the same efficiency that it did normal wounds. No longer the case, however, it has to rely on its feel no pain from singular purpose if you are choosing that mode of the ability to keep it alive. A little bit unfortunate, but not the end of the world. On top of that, the Emissary has a baked in four plus invulnerable save and some pretty okay shooting. A psychic tendril either able to fire a relatively crappy precision weapon that you'll likely never use. A pretty solid AP2 strength six blast attack firing 2d6 shots for clearing infantry or a powerful neuro lance. Two shots at strength 12 AP3 for d6 damage with the Melta ability able to increase their damage up to d6 plus two when you're within nine of your opponent. All of their psychic attacks hit on twos which is already great and if you can source rerolls elsewhere from them either through singular purpose or something like the synaptic nexus stratagem to grant rerolls you can actually get some high efficiency out of this guy the downside of the norn emissary is that its secondary melee weapons are a little bit underpowered it has a set of monstrous rending claws this is basically equivalent to the uh, additional scything talons that hive tyrants can take it's four attacks that hit on twos at strength seven ap2 for two damage this gives this guy a total of 10 attacks hitting on twos which is impressive by itself the downside is that those strength characteristics are not particularly high. This flips on its head, however, if we start talking about the Norn Assimilator. The Assimilator is focused almost entirely on doing lots of damage, especially at short range and in melee. Has less survivability than the Emissary, but is able to absolutely crush through heavy armor once it gets stuck into combat. This is indicated by the replacement of its psychic powers with a pair of Tox Injector Harpoons. While it does have one on each hand, the data sheet itself only has one of them, and combined it has a total of two attacks, hitting on twos at strength 12 AP3, D6 plus one damage. That's a pretty solid profile, basically just a LAS cannon. However, they do come in at a relatively piddly range of 12. Compared to the 18 inch range Neuro Lance that has the potential to get higher damage from the Norn Emissary, the Assimilator does significantly less damage, or at least is significantly less useful in its ranged capacity. But the Tox Injector Harpoons are basically there to buff the melee offense of this monster. Because after you shoot an enemy with those weapons, you can get plus two to charge if the target was a monster or a vehicle. Pretty solid, honestly. You can't really complain about that. On top of that, it can also use those Tox Injector Harpoons in melee. This replaces the crappy Rending Claw attacks from the Emissary with some powerful attacks at the same profile as the ranged version. Four swings hitting on twos to strength 12 AP3 for D6 plus one damage. It also replaces its defense against mortal wounds with Harpoon Barbs, which has the potential to deal D6 mortal wounds to enemies that are falling back away from it. Now, the other difference between these two is a difference in cost. The Norn Assimilator costs 20 points more than the Emissary, due, I think, from the fact that it is good at crushing armor, which is not something that is particularly particularly common in the Tyranid Codex. So let's look at some math regarding the difference in characteristics between these two Norn organisms. The greatest difference between the two is melee damage versus high toughness vehicles, where the Emissary with its high volume of pretty not very good attacks into vehicles is only able to do between four and five damage, 4.8. 814 on average with no buffs, the Assimilator can almost triple that, averaging close to 12 damage versus toughness 10 or higher enemies. This is a huge breakpoint because it does give Tyranids a frontline unit that is actually pretty good at punching vehicles, which they don't usually get very often. However, beyond that, the difference between the two profiles isn't that great because they still have the same number of attacks and the same ballistic skill. They're both high strength when dealing with smaller targets. They don't have too much of a difference. The Norn Assimilator is slightly more effective, able to kill two Terminators on average and five Space Marine equivalents, whereas the Emissary gets slightly under two Terminators on average, just about two, and is able to kill four Space Marines on average. These are um, these are meaningfully different. The Assimilator is slightly better, especially against armored targets, but obviously not hugely so. Against lighter stuff, light infantry, the two should be close to, if not exactly the same, because they both have high strength, high AP, and enough to punch through things with a five plus save very easily. Now from that breakdown, it seems like the Assimilator is just strictly better than the Emissary. Its damage is wildly better. It's more consistent against smaller targets and much better, significantly stronger against heavy targets. But we have to remember a couple things. First of all, this is melee only. And oftentimes a unit like these Norns is gonna be trying to dominate the center of the table and your opponent is simply not gonna go near it. On top of that, if you're choosing an objective to hold with singular purpose, once they move aggressively off 
that objective, they will no longer be benefiting from their singular purpose. So if you're choosing a mid-board objective or a no man's land objective to be the singular purpose objective, Norns trying to get into melee are just going to leave their defensive and objective control benefits behind. So looking at purely melee output doesn't really give the data sheet justice because that's usually not the capacity in which they're interacting with the game. They're standing on an objective, taking some shots and clearing out the smaller units that are around them, but rarely is your opponent gonna let you charge their big, valuable, hard to kill models if they're not ready to. Instead, what you want these guys to be doing is soaking damage. So let's look at them in that capacity. Now, most of the time, they will be largely the same. And especially if you start to include some detachment rules, they can kind of shore up the weaknesses between the assimilator and the emissary. Smaller arm shooting and low AP shooting is basically gonna be identical between the two. So there's not too much to look at there, but the issue is that this is a big tanky monster and your opponent is gonna direct their most powerful anti-tank weapons against it. So let's look at that. Looking at high damage anti-tank profiles like the Laz Cannon, Lancer, Laz Destroyer, and Railgun, we can see that there is a dramatic difference between the Assimilator and the Emissary. The Emissary takes about 30% less damage from a Laz Cannon thanks to its improved invulnerable save and about half the damage from the other two weapon types between the Lancer and the Tau Hammerhead Railgun. Those are high AP weapons that punch through most of the armor save available to the Norn Assimilator, and that four plus invulnerable save backed up by a five plus feel no pain makes the Emissary significantly harder to deal with for these big weapons. On top of that, the Emissary is also gonna be doing more damage on the shooting back. While its weapons aren't as high base damage as the Harpoons on the Assimilator, it is able to fire them further. So it's gonna be able to engage at a longer range and earlier in the game. So obviously we can see that there's a balance struck between the two profiles. The Assimilator is much more of a melee beat stick, while the Emissary is significantly more survivable, particularly against the opponent's heaviest weapons. So which one should you be taking in your 40K army? In my opinion, it is most often the Norn Emissary. The Emissary's defensive stat line and defensive buffs mesh better with the position that it's gonna be on the table and end up making it more effective at doing the thing that it's already doing, which is holding down objectives for the rest of your army to dominate primary scoring. The Assimilator is an interesting include, but the fact that it's more expensive and less survivable and is gonna still have a tough time actually leveraging its additional damage because most of it comes from melee attacks means that it's gonna be generally less useful in my opinion. Now, it's not to say that the Norn Assimilator is totally useless. Being a high strength melee attacker in Tyranids is already a good place to be, but I do think that there are dedicated platforms for those style of attacks that you can find elsewhere. Zoanthropes being able to have the same profile as the Tox Injector Harpoons, but at a 24 inch range rather than 12 or melee are going to be more efficient at doing that. And Carnifexes are another excellent option if you're trying to de deliver that armor crushing power once you get into melee. Now, last but certainly not least, let's talk about about some detachments for these guys. Which detachments are best for the Norns? I think the first one that comes to mind is Synaptic Nexus. It is basically perfectly designed for both of the Norn creatures to benefit from all of its stratagems and effects. While they do it on two, so the plus one to hit from the detachment ability, it isn't a huge help. They can get damaged once they're at five wounds, so you can use that to sort of shore their hit rolls. On top of that, you can give them reroll once to hit and wound with the stratagem and with reinforced hive node, it compounds with their already high save characteristic to make them even tougher to kill. This is maybe the one situation where the assimilator might edge out the emissary a little bit if you have an easy outlet for reinforced hive node. If it's benefiting from cover, hopefully your opponent doesn't have ignore cover or you have venom thrips nearby, so it's basically permanently getting cover. You can basically make it a zero plus armor save, which can mean that up to AP4 weapons are mathematically the same against it versus the Emissary. It's a lot of work though, and I don't know if it's necessarily worth it, especially when there is the chance your opponent either has ignore cover weapons or AP five or higher weapons that will just punch through all of those defenses anyway, and you would rather have a Norn Emissary regardless. Plus the Norn Emissary has better guns, so. Uh, generally, you'd probably be taking an emissary in that detachment, but the assimilator isn't too bad. On top of that, invasion fleet should always be mentioned. This thing gives lethal hits against vehicles, which is great for both of the Norns. In addition, you can also source a five plus feel no pain when off of their home objective, thanks to rapid regeneration. This can then give you a good incentive to choose the enemy units as the singular purpose target, because you're gonna be expecting to get the five plus feel no pain elsewhere and not necessarily from standing on your targeted objective. And with that, that's all I have to say about the Norn Emissary and Norn Assimilator. I do wish that the Assimilator had was at least a little bit cheaper. I think that the issues with the Assimilator kind of stem from the fact that 
the designers expected it to be more powerful than the Emissary, even if its rules and abilities are a little bit incongruous with its game plan. If it was 20 or 30 points less expensive, I think these two would be very much on par, but that extra invulnerable save for the Norn Emissary is just so valuable for the type of unit that it is, I think it definitely is incredibly strong. Let me know down in the comment section what you think about this discussion and this data sheet. However, big thanks for watching all the way to the end of the video. Thanks as well to everybody who supports the channel, either over on Patreon at patreon.com slash tactical tortoise, YouTube channel members, and Twitch subscribers. All you people are great and I love you. Remember to keep it classy, folks, and have happy wargaming.